So I'm Tom, uh, one of the four crew, um, and we've got Justin, Rob, and Jim as well. I know all the other members of the crew through, through sort of different routes. Jim and I used to row together at Chester University about 10 years ago. Uh, I've known Rob since I was about four. Uh, we've been friends since we were, we, we were young kids. We've been on a few adventures together over the years. We met Justin, he'd rowed across the Atlantic before uh, and his boat was up for sale and we got in touch with him to see if he wanted to sell his boat. And uh, it turned out he didn't want to sell his boat, he wanted to do another crossing, so then there were four of us. The route is from Portimao in Portugal to Cayenne in French Guiana. You start off in Portimao and you follow southwest from there, either through or, or around the top of the Canaries, depending how the weather looks. And then you kind of keep going and you gradually flatten out as you catch the trade winds. And then just before you get to South America, you just turn right, starting a little bit north. And the idea is to approach Cayenne from the southeast. So you slip up the channel into the port. Easy, mate, ain't it? The reason I, I want to do it mainly is because I just love an adventure, I love a challenge. Had I sold the boat quite early, quite quickly after crossing, I wouldn't have been opening back here again. But two years later, you forget all the bad stuff that happened, just remember the good times. And there is this nagging thing in me that says it wasn't quite complete. We're all aware of kind of like how bad ocean pollution is and all this kind of stuff and the, the wildlife it affects, but sometimes it often feels so distant from you. Um, whereas kind of like being there just like sat a foot above the ocean I think it'll kind of like you'll have this kind of connectivity with kind of like the world around you and what's going on around you that I think will stay with you forever you know it's all it'll all just be a bit more real. I just get a lot of fulfillment from pushing myself and, and seeing how far I can push myself and trying new challenges and then hopefully when you overcome those challenges you know it feels good. The decision to row the Atlantic was uh, probably something I dreamt up in at uh, university. Um, just doing different challenges. Um, it was always in my mind to, to row the Atlantic and then the opportunity came about. The island to island thing has bugged me. Even as I got into Antigua, I was thinking that was fine, but it's not quite enough. I suppose kind of a self-awareness, you know, you kind of like, you know that, yeah, like anything that's stressing me out at home, I've been there with like 20 foot waves around me. I can, I can overcome this. Why is the, like, the obvious question that everybody asks and it's probably the hardest question to answer because there isn't one sort of obvious reason, but um, I've just always had this sort of desire for adventure and it's almost like a, um, something that I need to do and over the years me and Rob the other crewmate we cycled around the world and there's just always that itch that needs to be scratched and uh, I just get a lot of fulfillment from pushing myself and, and seeing how far I can push myself. To paint a picture of the Atlantic it's everything from glass calm to 40 foot waves. It's an extraordinary situation. The first time you see a 40 foot wave your heart's in your mouth, think, how the hell are we going to get out of this? But the boat rides it, and then after that, you're fine, because it did it once, so it can do it again. The hardest part is rowing at night, because you can't see the waves are coming from, so you can't put the bow of the boat into the wave. And if the wave catches you broadside on, then you've got a problem, because it'll just smash you up. I know some people who've had horrific crossings, where they've had lots and lots of storms, and they've been knocked down a few times, even rolled over a couple of times, and it can be very, very frightening and very, very dangerous. The crossing we did was one of the calmer ones they'd had recently. It's luck of the draw. It depends how the weather gods are smiling on you or not, really. A lot of the time you see nothing at all. It's just you and the ocean. Against that, you see amazing wildlife sometimes. We saw last time up, we saw whales, we saw dolphins who followed us. We saw with flying fish, the flying fish will come and smack you across the face on a regular basis. We saw turtles, we saw these amazing ocean birds, I think they were skewers or something, they just stayed out with you the whole time, just seemed to live on the ocean, just astonishing. One of them came and sat with us for a couple of days to get a rest. But the best thing about it actually was the stars and the moon and the night skies. You think when you're in the UK, it's quite a lot of light pollution, but you see some stars. You go up, there's no light pollution, 
Oh my God, the stars, the number of stars, just extraordinary. We steered by the plough some nights when it was quite calm. Just, just, there's nothing like, like that many stars to make you feel incredibly small. The key thing to this challenge is being able to work as a team and uh, I think we've got a really good team so hopefully it'll work out well. Fortunately, uh, you're either too tired or too focused on rowing to worry about what's going on, really. You have to be really calm on an ocean rowing boat. You're going to fall out inevitably, but you've let it, you, you, have, you have your spat and you move on. You can't hold a grudge. There's not space to hold a grudge, frankly. I'm quite good at being you know, with other people for, for long periods of time, but um, this will be a whole nother level um, you know, on, on a 29-foot boat. Um, it's just about looking out for each other really and you know you might be having a good day but it doesn't mean everybody else is and just being aware of kind of how everyone else is feeling, um, helping each other out when we have bad days. Being with those three other people for that length of time will be one of the hardest things but probably one of the most rewarding as well. Well I'm really proud to say this is a very old-fashioned boat. It was important that we did it in an old-fashioned traditional boat. Uh, the new modern boats are super fast and super slick. If you bought everything brand new, including the new style boats, it's gonna set you back the best part 150 grand. It's not a cheap beast to do. If you do it the way we're doing it, which is with a second hand old fashioned boat, a lot of the kit on it already, it's probably gonna cost us between 40 and 50 grand. The food, I mean, a lot of it is kind of like specialist, dehydrated food. Um, so it's expensive and high calories as well. So that's a big cost. Um, one of the ones is, is shipping. Obviously, we end up in, in South America um, and we've got to get the, the boat back somehow. So actually kind of getting the boat on board, often it'll come back by a container ship, it needs to be put in a container and, and shipped back. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's like, you know, a significant cost, just getting the boat back to the, back to the UK. anybody's like wanting to help um, on our website we've got links to our I just giving page where people can can donate to um, help you know put money towards our life raft or a power anchor or any other bits and pieces that we still need which will really help kind of support us make our trip like a more successful one uh, yeah and improve our chances of kind of like getting across and getting across safely and there's also our, our links on there to the to the charities to surface against sewage and to our blue light. So do have a look at our website, m2matlantic4.com, uh, which stands for mainland to mainland, um, which is the route we're doing. We've got a blog on there, we've got lots of photos, video. There's also loads of information about the route, the crew, everything that we're doing really, all the information's on there, and there's links through to our uh, um, donation pages. So we've got pages set up for the two charities that we're raising money for. Um, our Blue Light, which is a mental health charity for the emergency and essential services and Surfers Against Sewage, um, which is an ocean uh, cleanup charity. And there's also a page on there if you'd like to donate to the crew to help us get funds to get to the start line. There's a Just Giving page on there for, for donating to the crew as well.